I've always been an athlete. I was a wrestler in college. So I grew up with a tough mindset, you know. Just the more pain, the, the, the better you'll be. Somewhere along the way, I had sort of picked this path and I was living a projection to please others. Please others, please my, please my parents, please society. I had a tax problem and I was in the wrong relationship. And you know, I was lying to myself about the magnitude of these problems that were stacking up and my life's just completely going down the wrong path with no idea this is happening. The pressure got so great that my immune system snapped and went sideways and I got scleroderma. Scleroderma, your cells uh, spit out too much collagen. But the bad news is it gets in your internal organs, like if it takes out your lungs or your heart, or your kidneys, you're just gone. There's no cure for it, right? And this kind I got took me down very hard and fast. Basically every day for three and a half years, I woke up, you feel like you have a red wine hangover and you feel like you have a bad flu and everything tightens up, your skin tightens up. I couldn't stand up straight at one point and you have no stamina. So just going from the car to the house or just walking through the house can get you winded, right? I thought I'm screwed, man. You know, the stats are just horrible. There was an uh, article, Ecstasy Approved for Trial in Marin. I thought, that's interesting. I've never had MDMA and I wonder what it does. And I did a little research on it and read about how they combine psychotherapy with it and what it does. And it, something just clicked in my gut and said, just, this is going to be very helpful for you. To get into the study, I had to have a clean urine test. And Phil Wolfson, Dr. Phil Wolfson said, John, you have to get off the opiates. Here's the tapering schedule. And I took the tapering schedule home. I looked at the clock. It was like 3 p.m. And I thought the last one I put in my mouth was 9 a.m. That's it. I'm not putting another one in my mouth. So I'd had, I think, maybe eight or nine meetings with them leading up you know, qualify for the study, going through the physical, them getting to know me, and I would just visit their house, and they would sit down with me, and they were super loving, just kind people, and they'd let me know, John, we'll know you better than anyone in your life knows you, you know, by the end of the study, which is really cool. You schedule a dose day, which is you show up at 9.30 a.m., and I have trepidations. I'm just, like, lit up with, like, anxiety, <laughs> and, um, but also excited, you know. First of all, after being in pain for four years, you know, and feeling mentally and physically like, just like dog shit. To feel that good is just, is, I think that's where the medicine really makes a big difference because you can go, this is possible. You don't have, necessarily have to be on this drug, but just this feeling this good is possible. You know, you get blankets, blindfold if you want it, you know, ambient music or headphones, and these two loving, caring people that are so good at what they do, and they let you just kind of disappear into your head for a while. And if it's time, they'll say, sit up, let's talk about this a little bit, you know? And it's just like, don't want to sit up. Come on, sit up, let's talk about this. The most uncomfortable things, your financial situation, relationship, people in your life, whatever is on your list that you've made together. And you just talk about this stuff and, and the topics are just sitting there right in front of you. And it's not uncomfortable at all. You don't even care. Your fear center and your amygdala is shut down from that medicine. And you, they just, they're able to just go in there and do their work. You know, it's a construction site and they're in there just cleaning it up with you together. Ideas came to me in terms of how to fix these problems and what to do and how to pursue uh, a new career of helping others. And uh, it's kind of appeared to me as, how, as to how I would help people. I had an idea, which is you know, a nonprofit that would build, create some tools to help people that get knocked on their ass like I did. And I, meanwhile, I, I put together every single angle that I could combat the disease. And it gave me some inspiration to buy a pair of running shoes and just try to jog trot for half a mile or a mile. And that run was just horrible. I mean, it felt horrible. But I got a little drop of the runner's endorphin after it. And my body just said, thank you. And it just sort of blossomed from there. back and got a national membership at a yoga studio. I do yoga every single day. Let's we'll start walking this way. Something I've always wanted to do is to be a personal trainer, you know, and I, I got certified also to teach uh, aerial yoga, which is 
wonderful modality, especially since that modality helped me kind of unbind a lot of my fascial tissue. I can stand up straight. I was super mobile compared to what I was. Absolutely being able to face whatever you're afraid of. Face the problems that have mounted up and just walk right into them, you know. Maybe you can fix them, maybe you can't, but you start working on it. And that's what this MDMA therapy helps you tap into. Empathy for oneself as one has empathy for humanity is a key ingredient. If you can uh, be empathetic and help a stranger, if you can do some small good deed or just lend an ear, you can do that for yourself too. And that's the hardest hurdle, I think. I think there's going to be 300 spots around the country where someone with PTSD can get into one of these studies and, and change or save your life.